So the thing is, are you really doing the best that you're best at? Or are you just being good at what you're doing? I started in the mines at age nine. I left at 18 when I was old enough to join the Army. I stayed in the Army for 20 years. I put two tours in Vietnam in a helicopter scout platoon. Was going to retire in Pennsylvania and work with my brother-in-law at a Cadillac dealership. He found a dealership that was for sale here in Key West, so I came to Key West. We bought the car dealership and I became a co-owner. I didn't like the business. It was too fast, too fluid, and I went to work at a marina. So I started at the marina selling boats. Within six months, I was general manager. Within a year, I was a partner of the marina, and I stayed there five years. And I went to work for Citicorp, and they wanted me as a project manager to go ahead and get the marina up to par so they could sell it. Offered me a job to go with them in their real estate division, which I did not want to do because I had to leave Key West. And I opened up a store called Last Flight Out. I think the most unique thing about Clay Gregor is he's a survivor. And uh, no matter what, he is uh, he's consistent. He's a survivor. Well, I think Clay's a very complicated person. He's also very honest and very, um, what's the word that I'm looking for? Very generous also. You can call it an accident, you can call it a consequence, or you can call it a coincidence. But it's only gonna happen with your own involvement. I do know some people who are doing the best they're best at, but I know a lot more who are just being good at what they're doing now. The question is, what are you doing? a man asked me an interesting question yesterday. He asked me, what was I trying to prove by working so hard? And I had to think about that for a second. And I said, well, it's not really work that I'm doing, but what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to show other people just how good I can be. But the trick was, how good can I be at doing the best that I'm best at? And he seemed puzzled about that. And I told him that until I crossed over that threshold from immortality to mortality, I'd never be able to find out what I was best at. Because prior to that, I was going to live forever. I really thought at one time that I was the only human being that was ever going to last forever. But there came a time in my life when something happened that changed me to think differently. I found out a long time ago in my 20s that I was not special, life was frivolous, and life was random. And if I wanted anything out of this life, I better go after it starting right then. I, if I think I, I want to do something, I'll do it. No, never. I've done everything I want to do in life. Uh, if you make decisions at all, um, you know, you're going to at some time second guess yourself. But you, you know, once you make up your mind, you got to go with it. I didn't ask anybody, should I move down here? I just moved down here. I didn't ask anybody when I opened my store. I just opened my store. I've owned five businesses. I've never been unsuccessful. I've been successful in them all. 
because inside, intuitively, I know what is right and what I can do and what I can't do. Yeah, there's probably some things I look back over my life that, um, although at the time I not, might not have talked myself out of them, but I just chose to go a different direction. But hindsight, I would have um, I probably talked myself into the reason why I took the direction I did after the fact, if that makes sense. <laughs> I learn a lot from people, and I listen to them. I really do, and I understand them. I try to. Several years ago, a friend of mine who was a doctor, actually he's a cardiovascular surgeon, had gone on a skiing trip with his wife and two children, and his wife suffered a terrible accident. Broke her back, broke her pelvis, upper legs. Diagnosis was that she'd be in traction for about two years and immobile. Well, they had two sons, little boy one and another one three. And he ended up taking three years off. And one day we were talking, and he, he, he was just happier than anybody I've been around in a long time. And we were talking about it, although he'd been out of practice for three years. And he said, you know, Clay, I was a great surgeon, and I still am a great surgeon. He said, but for the past three years, raising my two boys, I found out that I am doing the best I'm best at raising children. Clay's been an influence uh, in my life since I was a teenager. Um, so yeah, I, I, one time I worked directly for him. And, uh, yeah, he's, he, he's had an influence on me, absolutely. I think he's a storyteller, and I think he's a storyteller of um, not just his own stories, but everybody that uh, he touches in his store. And I think that's how his store has evolved. Um, they share life experiences and life stories, and I think that, uh, that per perpetuates the uh, last flight out mentality. So if you want to know who you are, here's a little exercise you can practice with. Go into a dark room, put a chair in the middle, and start talking to yourself. Who am I? And when you start to get embarrassed about your own thoughts, you don't stop. You just keep on talking. All those embarrassing thoughts about yourself. I want to own the world. I want this. I want that. And if you start to get embarrassed with your own thoughts, then you're on the right track. And once you do that, and continue to do it, you'll find who you are. Once you find out who you are, there's a self-confidence that takes over. Then you are strong within yourself, you know who you are, and you know what you want to do. If you stop, those thoughts, when they become embarrassing, and you will not even reveal to yourself, you got to understand that they are true thoughts because if you don't believe you have a soul inside of you, then who are you talking to when you're by yourself? That's the key to the whole thing. Your soul really does know, and you got to talk to it. Oh, sure, there were lots of things, things that uh... I lacked enough confidence with, or I thought I lacked the money, or uh, uh, there's, there's always things to reach for. Oh, I really wanted to go to Australia, and I talked myself out of it because of the price of the ticket. And now I'm not sure I'll ever get there. I've learned this, don't look for you and someone else. You're the one, and if you don't know who you are, you're nobody. You know, everybody has things in their past that happen that has a direct relationship to their future. And it's unknowing at the time. Long time ago, when I had started in a business and took on a bunch of partners, it failed. And it failed miserably. They walked out and left me holding the bag and the debt. And I really didn't know what to do was the first time in my life that I was ever what I would almost call destitute. I was confused and I decided that maybe the best thing I could do was just back out of everything. I was retired army, I had a pension, my house was nearly paid for, my wife was working so I wasn't going to be homeless but I lost all desire to do anything and I thought maybe after all these years the best thing I could do is just kick back and make the best of it. Swallow my pride and get on with it. 
forget all these dreams that I had. So I sat around the house for a week or two. My wife was saying, well, what are you going to do? I said, I don't know. I'm trying to figure it out. And I decided that the best thing I could possibly do was go back into a safe haven, which was go to work for the federal government. I had exemptions for job statuses with the federal government. And I went out to the Boca Chica Naval Air Station, went into the personnel office, and told them I'd like to put an application in. First time in my life I ever filled out a job application. As I sat there, she was going through my resume and my application and said to me that, well, Mr. Gregor, we really don't have anything to match your qualifications. I don't care what it is. I just need a job. She said, well, the only openings we have right now are for security guards. I said, fine, when, are, when do you have openings? She said, right now. Here I am, you know, this entrepreneur, you know, this, this conqueror of the business world, and here I'm applying for a job as a security guard on the gate of a Navy base, which made it worse because I was Army. And I said, man, I've come a long way in a hurry. She said, Clay, I'll tell you what I want you to do. I want you to go home and think about this for 24 hours. And if you still want the job, come on back out and we'll start the end processing. And I thought she had found something wrong with my application or wanted to check out my background. And I looked at her and I said, well, I'm ready to go right now. And she said, no, I want you to go home for 24 hours and think about it. I said, well, what am I going to think about? She said, Clay, let me say this to you. You're not a security guard. And then it dawned to me what she was actually saying to me. Behind her desk, there was a sign. The first time I'd ever seen it, it said, putting the personal in the personnel. The next morning, my wife was getting ready to go to work. And she said, well, how'd it go yesterday? What are you going to do now? I said, well, I'll tell you what I'm not going to do, Maxine. I'm not going to become a security guard, that's for sure. So, 10 years later, here I am. Business is doing fine. Everything is fine. And every anniversary of being open, I send her a card and say, thanks for putting the personal in the personnel. I think just being younger, you tend to be a little bit more daring. Uh, the, uh, that feeling of invincibility uh, and immortality is prevalent when you hit 50, that goes away. Well, I play music. Uh, when I was younger, I remember going out and uh, renting halls, renting police, making the posters, and putting on a whole show. Well, when I first got married, my husband and I moved from the continental United States to Guam, totally unsolicited. I like going swimming, well, I can't swim. But I will try it because my friends were doing it, so I try to do it also. I almost drowned. Honestly, I still, I believe in going with the impulse, doing what I do. It can get me into trouble at times, but uh, not anything bad. Look at where I'm at. Key West, Florida. It's in the morning. I've been here 23 years. Nothing has ever changed. The same beautiful island. But look where I came from, and how did I get here? At age nine, in Shemokin, Pennsylvania, a coal mining region, I started to go into the mines with my father and pick rock out of coal. I stayed there until I was 18, and every day that I worked the mines, all I thought about was, this is my last trip out. I'll never go back down. And at age 18, I had my out. I joined the Army. Had no idea what was going to happen. All I knew was I had to get out of those mines. And I joined the Army. And I loved the Army. It was great. It was travel, it was adventure, it was everything. It was people. One thing that's changed my life is uh, uh, the, uh, my marriage, my recent marriage to my, to my dream girl. How was it joining the military? Probably buying the business I own right now. I'm sure you 
you guys have heard of Mel Fisher and the search for the Atosha. And when I moved down here, it was to work with uh, Mel. And so that was always a chance. You know, I never give advice to people. I can't give advice because to give advice would be something that I, I think they should do and I can't tell them what to do. I can only tell them what I've done and my experiences. So everything I ever talk about or write about is my own personal experiences. And sometimes I'll put it into a different metaphor to, so they can understand it. And I tell them this, that there comes times when you're gonna have to step out on that 10 meter diving board, close your eyes, lean forward, and trust there's water in the pool and for God's sake, stop going back down the ladder. Because that happens over and over and over. We get right there, we're teetering over and oops, nope, I better wait. And back down the ladder. I've never been one to take chances. If anything, I do it today, not in the past. I think the risk was absolutely worth it. It's changed my life uh, for the positive, for certain. In retrospect, it really wasn't a risk. It just, per I perceived it that way at the time. Why most people never react to any kind of an opportunity. And it's a single phrase that stops everybody. And that phrase is counterintuitive. You'll sit down, you'll design a plan, you'll design a relationship, you'll work on something, you'll get the greatest idea in the world, you are convinced that it's absolutely foolproof. It has to work because intuitively you know it's right for you. And the second you decide that it's right for you, somewhere inside of you comes up this, well, maybe it's not right, maybe this will happen. And you become counterintuitive automatically because those are the fears from which you run. It can be anything. I know people in Key West say, gee, I'd love to start this, but we may get a hurricane. A bridge might go down. The stock market's going to fall. I have a bunch of t-shirts that I printed up just for those certain people. And if I'm talking to the person and I realize that they have no idea of what's going on, I hand them a little gift from me. I say, this is for you, from me. When you get back home, you wear this. And on the t-shirt, all it says is, help me. I'm counterintuitive. And just to prove how much I want to help them, on the back of the shirt, I do it reversed so they can look in the mirror and read it. Because they're going to need that the rest of their lives. I'll tell you one thing. Isn't it time you stop departing and start arriving? Or are you just going to be hanging around the airport all the time going nowhere and watching others? My father told me when I was young that for me to get ahead in life, I'd have to get a job and work hard for the boss and that he would take care of me. That was his advice to me and my life. I often say that my parents did the best job they possibly could do raising me, but I found out later on that it was not a very good job. They just didn't know any better. What he should have told me was that I should dare to get a state of mind of what I really wanted to do and then had the courage to pursue it. But he never told me that. So all I knew was, Butch, work hard for the boss and he'll take care of me. I think every child born today in the world under a bedroom wall should have the three words, dare, state of mind, and courage. Dare to do something, get a state of mind of what you want to do and have the courage to follow it. And for the rest of their lives, that should be their trilogy of living. Are you on an unrelenting quest for serenity, focusing on your wants, forgetting your needs? Can you see the end before you begin? Or can you afford to let precious time slip away?
see the sun? Just for today, that sun rose only for me. And that's the way I look at it. This is my sun, my day. And I'm going to make the most out of it. I don't know where I got that idea from, but I've been using that for years. That I just make believe that just for today, the sun rises only for me and shows me the light of day. The best of every day, I think, um, you know, I'm, I'm just very happy when I wake up. The fact that I did wake up, there's a lot of people didn't wake up today. I try to plan, but I try to plan with flexibility in mind. I have to remember to take things one day at a time. Otherwise, I get really overwhelmed. I just, I guess, I take a Paxil in the morning and everything's all right. <laughs> you don't want to hear that, do you? You know, I have to smile when I talk about this, but a lot of people will say to me, you know, you're so lucky, I'd really like to have what you have. And I, I laugh at them, I say, well, I don't think you could take the pain. <laughs> they, they don't understand that. And I, I say, well, look, at what I'm talking about is the pain of making a decision and executing the decision. That's what it's all about. Anybody can have what I have. You know, I just came down, decided to move here. That was it. That was a decision. Moved my family down here, whether they liked it or not. That was a decision. I didn't ask my children, do you want to move to Key West? I said, we're moving to Key West. When I decided to create Last Flight Out, I didn't go around asking people, what do you think? You know, should I start this kind of a story? You think it'll work? Nothing. I made a decision. When I made a decision to open this store, I said, well, I'm going to have to work it every day. And I do. I make decisions every day. I don't linger on them. I don't think about them. And I don't ask anybody about them. I have mentors, sure. And they help guide me through other areas of my life. I liken it to the lemmings going to the ocean. Everybody wants to follow the lead, and nobody wants to lead. So when you say to me, you know, I'm so lucky, I'll say this to you. You can have everything that I have. It's really easy. Just make a decision. If you make other people happy, and uh, we're sitting on a dive boat that I, I captain, and there are people that take chances by coming out with us, and I think uh, by us, uh, showing them a good time and showing them a little bit of something that they don't get to see every day. Um, it makes you feel good. Try to, uh, try to emphasize what's positive and de-emphasize what isn't. My wife and I um, lost a baby. And uh, I, can, I can honestly say now I look at life differently. Where before I, I looked at life as, oh, it's a grind, I gotta go back to work. Where today, because nothing ever like that ever happened to me like that. Until it touches you that way, you look at life through a different set of eyes. Now you don't take it for granted. See that cruise ship out there? They're going to be docking at Key West in about an hour. They'll probably be here till 4 o'clock this afternoon. It's probably a five-day cruise, one time a year. Those people will take that five-day cruise. The other 51 weeks, they're working to take that. Now, here's what happens with these people. They arrive in Key West, they start walking around, they see the beauty of it, and they say, oh my God, I want to live here. This could be me living here. If I get to talk to them, I'll say, why isn't it? And they have all kinds of reasons and I try to explain to them that they can have this if they really want it. And my experience has taught me that many years ago, I decided that for me to be totally happy, I had to become very self-centered. I had to become the most important person in my universe. And I had to do only what I wanted to do. I had to be selfish. However, I had to consider everybody around me when I made those decisions so as not to hurt them. But it had to be me first. And I always get that odd look from people when I say that because they're thinking, oh God, here's this egotistical guy. Listen to him. Well, here's the way it works. And it has worked every day since I decided that. 
If I am doing everything that I want to do, considering everybody around me, doing exactly what I want to do, then everybody around me will be getting 100% of me. They won't be getting 75%, they won't be getting 80%. They will never hear from me, you know, I need my own space. I need to get away from you for a while. We need to take separate vacations. We're too close. If you see 100% of me and you like it, then you're getting it all. And there's no reason to want your own space. And that's how you'll accept me. And I won't have to live 80% of my life for you and 20% of my life in a back room somewhere wringing my hands as they say in quiet desperation, gee, if only I, if only this, if only that. I just do it and that's the bottom line. But I also say to my wife and my children, you must do everything that is important to you. And as long as I know what it is, it's okay with me so I don't have to wonder what are my children like? What's my wife really like? The worst situation you ever get into is being married or be with a partner, be with a relationship, be with anybody for 10, 15, 20 years. And it's that same scene over and over again, the door slams and that shout comes out, you never knew me. How could that possibly be? But it's done over and over and over again. And that's ridiculous. And to prove that point, I tell people, if you don't think you're living that way, then when you get back to work after you leave this paradise, one of you call the other early in the morning at work and say, listen, when you get home tonight, we got to talk. And that other person just freaks out because they have no idea what you're going to talk about. If I get that call, I say, great, let's go out to dinner and talk. That's the difference. And that's how I live my life. And that's why I've been here 23 years. And that's why I'm as happy today as I was in August of 78 when I moved here. And that's why I've been married 41 years and my children are all here. And my grandchildren are all here. Uh, I like my job. It's very, you know, uh, laid back. Clay is the best boss. So I like what I'm doing. Is it the best and best that? I don't know. You know, I only know a very few people are doing the best or best at. Most of my friends and people that I know are just very good at what they're doing now. So the question really is, how about you? Find your own state of mind. Chart your own journey. Find your own personal paradise. Be the best that you are best at.